What was the manor system of Anglo-Saxon England? Was it any different to the system that the Romans used of the Roman manor of having slaves and an owner and some free men there to govern the slaves? Well, no, it wasn't any different. The only difference was, was that the difference of technology used in the actual processing of food. The Anglo-Saxons more widely used the water wheel, the 12 oxen plough, which was a deep plough which carved deep into the earth, allowing a greater cycle of crops to be um, produced throughout the year. This gave them a technological leap over their Roman forebears. But overall, the system was the same. And the supply of slave labour came from either war captives from opposing factions within Anglo-Saxon England because, of course, for half of the history of Anglo-Saxon England, the until Athelstan united the country, um, there were different warring uh, kingdoms, such as Kent, Wessex, Mercia, Northumberland, which was a, a hub of intellectual uh, progress because of Bede and the influence of Irish monks. An oral system was imposed on Britain by the Anglo-Saxons because of a great folk wandering, a great migration of people to Britain from the continent. That, was, that meant that there was a caste system. Now, in Anglo-Saxon society itself, a caste system was not completely alien, but it was less a caste system then. The people could get out of their castes. The, there were Creoles who were, for, who, who were free men who may have owned slaves themselves, but they were servants to lanes and then lanes to earls and then earls to the king. All these people were elected to their posts. Now, when the English got to uh, Britain, you can say that the majority of the men were warriors or mercenaries, or would you use the term private contractors to, from a modernist point of view? Or they, in various guises, they had some military role, either as logistics or as, cut, or as oxen herders, like cowboys, basically. It was like a Wild West film. Um, and it, you can make exactly the same uh, argument that the Britain was settled just the way the English settled America. You see the same pattern. Um, but in some way they had a military role. But once the land was conquered, once the Welsh were subdued or pushed out to the west and into Wales itself eventually, um, the Celtic people who were left were absorbed into the culture. You could no longer distinguish between English or Welsh. They just all became English. And the difference between whether there was a superiority factor or not between the Nordic or Celtic things, I think, is ridiculous. I think they are both equally capable races of people, especially since I'm a mix of the two. Um, then you... And since both sides held each other to a complete standstill in the middle of the country, from east to west, um, for many centuries. Now, the uh, manorial system started to break down in its apartheid system in the earlier times to become more uh, equal in Alfred the Great's time, and then greater still in Athelstan's time. Although bylaws and common laws of Welsh people being kept in certain areas was still applicable during Alfred's time. He even wrote some laws himself in the Bothalus law code. But what is certain is that the distinction between Celt and Anglo-Saxon was breaking down. Um, and to the point where today it is you, it, indistinguishable, you know, between the different peoples of Britain. We are all now British, okay? 
because of the dissolution of Wales, England and Scotland into one country, Great Britain, uh, in, the, in the Union. So why have I skipped so far forward in history? Well, the manorial system was imposed in the more familiar term, plantations. Plantations are designed to, as factories to produce crops to be sold on. And the first instance of it being used in a colonial way was the production of opium when the English went and took over from the Dutch and French in India, from the Dutch East India Company, uh, and imposed that, that system on there. Because all Englishmen were now, by this time, almost out of the caste system and only a class system that could that that people could still move up in the world in. I mean that was what Great Expectations, Charles Dickens' novel was about. You could still see Anglo Saxon England's problem of a car system. How do you get how do you solve the problem of being a conquering a uh, conquering nation over another nation and then some of those other nations do better than some of your people and some of your people do better than the other nation that you conquered and you're also seeing that people are into intermarrying but less so in the Anglo-Saxon era but more so later on as the distinctions start to drift and they start to have a homogenization of the two cultures into one culture and also the power of the English language, where I am an, I am a nationalist on that point, and not a moderate nationalist either. I believe the English language is a global language because, and it should be spoken globally. Um, the English language through Shakespeare, you can see that Shakespeare and Shawser, Shawser was speaking in Anglo-Saxon or Middle English, and Shakespeare is, you can see the victory of English over Celtic languages and over French and Norman, which was the Viking and French mixed together. You can see that. that so that at the time of, of um, Shakespeare, it was not completely um, fixed as it is today, but it was an evolving language. But the manorial system set the tone for the rest of the British Empire. Um, the British Empire was based on that manor system of the Lord, his, ser his, his lanes, his servants, his slaves, and the slavery just became indentured labour. You became indebted through a credit system which was created by the Normans and their people, and there was certain Jewish influence as well. Um, through the creation of, of the credit, but it was mostly created by the Italian mafia, the Medici's in uh, in Rome and Venice and other places, uh, and that was brought to England during the Tudor times. Um, so there are many different layers and reasons for the manorial system, but the few the, the neo feudalists of today would like to bring it back. Or well, they have brought it back, but in a very more subtle way. We are now all indentured citizens because we are all in debt and we're all in need of their credit. And that's why they want to keep us out of having a currency that is backed half by gold. But you can see that the manorial system was very successful because it grew up and instead of white people enslaving white people, it became white people enslaving black people because of the supply of black labour came from the Ottoman Empire and the Arabs to Europe and also through the Crusades. Um, and that opened up Africa to the Western world and Africa thus became part of the Western world but also a subject of it and would later then be colonised by the Western world. And so that's how you see the start of many different European empires, which were all based on a homogenization between the Nordic people and the Roman people and the Celtic people. And this would thus create a common European and Christian identity. Christendom thus became, Euro Christianity thus became Europeanized. But I hope this gives you an insight into how the British Empire started from its roots in Anglo-Saxon England 
and Norman England.